So I've created a small sample publisher document. It's just one of the templates that you get with Microsoft Publisher. It's nothing clever that I've actually done here. I can can honestly say I'm not really a favor of this program, other than it's fairly simple to use. It has a ribbon. A lot of it is very word-like, or if you've used any kind of desktop publishing tool at all, I'm sure you'll be able to figure it out. All I did was take the template, which has a cover page, the inside pages, so the two pages together to form the inside, and then a back cover, and the text is everything that's provided within the template, so I didn't write anything here. The only thing I did do was add a little bit of text here that contained the formatting that is currently supported by this application. Just so you get an idea, you can see this is inline formatting. So I've added some inline superscript, subscript, and strike through, as well as some bold and some italic. Um, otherwise, it's all exactly as it is within the template. So here's my file. Now, the reason we need this application is because if I click on File Export and you look at the options that are available, you can export this format as a PDF file or an XPS. But it even tells you here that the content cannot be easily changed. There are free viewers for it, but you certainly can't use this format to convert it back to a sample, uh, convert it back to a Microsoft Publisher file. So if you're translating this for your customer and they want a translated version in publisher format, you're screwed really. There is another option to publish as HTML, but this also has the same problem in that it cannot be brought back in as a, not really efficiently, you can mess about a bit, but it's not really efficient um, and doesn't really allow you to, to create an exact replica of the original source publisher document, only now it's translated. So this is what this application does. So I'll close that file, head over to Studio, and in Studio, in my welcome menu, I've added a shortcut link to this little application. So it's very light, starts up instantaneously, has two tabs, export where you will drop the Microsoft Publisher files, and an import button where you will drop the translated XML files to convert it back to the Publisher file. There's a few simple settings, some export settings that I covered in the blog article with different types of information that you can export and some import settings which mirror really what you've exported to decide whether you want to bring them back in again. What's interesting is you can export the images and this is quite useful because the import also allows you to import images so if you have to do any localization on the images itself and I can show you how that works we'll make a couple of changes just to prove it um, then you can also cater for that with this application. So pretty smart. So what we're going to do is I go to my sample publication and I'm just going to drag and drop it. Oop, I've got, excuse me. You need to be, do me, need to make sure that you're in the right tab. So if you're going to drop a pub file, you've got to be in the export tab. So that's the only bit of complexity to this, <laughs> to this application. And clearly I failed at the first hurdle. But there it is, my publisher file. And now I can just click on export, which is now colored. It's no longer grayed out because there's a file there. And I can have lots of files here if I like. So I'm going to go with the default settings and I'm just going to click on export. That runs through, does the processing on that file. I imagine if you have lots of files and very big documents, this might take a, maybe a minute or two. It's taken me, I don't know, 10, 15 seconds maybe to do that one file. And you can see that what it's given me now is a folder that contains all the images. So if I look at those, open them up, there's the different images that we have. Um, and in fact, maybe what we'll do is just very quickly, let's just, um, which one's which? Well, let's just make some changes to some of these images. Let's go to that one. Just drop that into my little editor here. Draw, and let's just add it for multivarious. And we'll just add that um, horrible looking image. Click on OK there, and we'll save it as the same name. So we'll replace it. So I've added that into one image, and then maybe we'll just look at add one into this image as well. So I'll click on, oh, wrong thing, excuse me. I need to open that with fast and capture. So I'll drop that into there. Draw, I'll add in here. 
it for multifarious. So we'll just pretend we made a couple of changes to the image. It might be possible. It might be important. You might have to make changes to the yeah, to the images to suit the country where you've gone to, or the the people that are in there, or the text. You might have to do more serious changes to the images. And all you would do is save them back with the same names as the images that were there. That's the important thing. Um, so I'll save it as the same one. Replace it. Yep, so let's make sure now, so if I open these images up, so I've got that little change in there and I've got that little change. So I've changed two of the images. Okay, so let's go to the more interesting stuff. So the other things that this has created is first of all, it's created the XML file. And if I open that up, there we can see the XML file that we're going to handle and translate. So pretty straightforward, all the translatable text is in these text elements, so like this. So it's really straightforward. There are some, as you can see, some entities here containing bits of tags. This, I think this is probably line returns or something, this, the R slash, and there's, a, there's an N slash as well. And there's also some inline tags, which we'll see where I added some bits and pieces. Um, so here I said they can handle superscript. You can see that all of this is also um, tagged using entities. So we need to we need to cater, cater for these as well. It's also created a PDF, and if I double click on that, you can see the PDF. And the PDF is a perfect representation of the file, page by page. So that's pretty cool. So if you had to create this for a translator and they didn't have publisher, but you gave them the project with the XML file, you could give them this PDF and they'd be able to see what it was supposed to be, what what it was supposed to look like, which is pretty nice. And then there's this pseudo translation file that is created um, to give you an opportunity to make sure that everything is um, properly extracted. And the way that works, as you can see, if I open this up, you can see that all the text has had all the vowels replaced. So you can see everything that is translatable. So anything that is not being extracted, any text in here that doesn't look like this, is not gonna be anything that you can extract with this tool and you're gonna to have to find a different way of handling it. But for this document, you can see pretty much everything is extracted. So it just gives the project manager a bit of peace of mind that they're going to be able to handle the entire file. Quite a good idea. Normally what you'd have to do is run it through Studio, pseudo translate it, um, and check it that way. So this way you don't even need to use Studio for that, which is quite nice. So we move over to Studio. And what I've got now that I've got those files, if I just show you the file type, so I'm going to click on File, Options, and go to my file types here. And in there, I've added this pub to XML file type. You'll be able to find this, this very settings file inside the zip when you download it from the Open Exchange. So that will make it easy for you, but you can create your own, it's so simple. All I've done is I've given it a name, I gave it an icon, and I just converted the image that was on the, the application itself using an, a free online image to icon converter, and then Browse to it and added it to the added it to here. This was very simple to do. Then under the detection, this is the root element of the XML file. Parser rules. I've got two rules: the text element, always translatable, and I gave it some context and I just invented the context. So I called it pub for a, a publisher file. Then I under the embedded content section because I've used this to handle the, the internal tagging. I've used the legacy file type for this because it's easier to add them because you can just use a regular expression. And for these, I don't even need a regular expression. It's just exactly the text that is used for the tag. So it's very straightforward. So what I've done is enabled the embedded content processing, added pub because that's what I called the context here, pub. Um, if I just go into, I use lowercase and the reason for that is because if I edit that, you can see the identifier is pub in lowercase. Okay. So go back to here, so it's pub. And then I've just added regular expressions for all of the supported tags. These two were just there because these, I think are marking line endings or something. And so I've just tagged those to remove them. So you won't even see those when you're, tra when you're um, translating. And then the internal tags, I've just set them up, bold, italic, the strike throughs, so, sub, superscript and subscript. So dead simple. So if I want to translate the document then, just make a note of where, where that is. We'll pick the XML file.
translate single document. English to Russian, I'll just go with that. No TM. So this opens up the file. You can see that it's been using the correct file type because when I'm in view tag ID mode, which is this is one over here, then this little orange tab down here will give you the ID of the file type that's used. And you can see it says pub to XML version 2.1. So I know I'm using the right one. Notwithstanding that I can see from the document structure that this is probably the right file. And when I click on that, it gives me the information that I put in there, which is that it's in Microsoft Publisher XML created using pub to XML version 2.1 from Patrick Hartnett. So very straightforward, very simple. And if I scroll down, you can see that I've also got the tagged information here with the superscript, the subscript, the strike through formatting, bold, italic. I didn't need to format it like that, but it just looks nicer and it becomes clear exactly what it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to translate this into Russian. Obviously I'm going to cheat because I don't speak Russian. So I'm going to just use the pseudo translation. So this will be complete nonsense, but it will use something that looks like Russian. So I'll pseudo translate the file. I click on next. I don't want to append these characters because it just looks really messy then. And I'm going to apply pseudo translation from the dictionary. So it's going to use Russian characters, um, but it will not make sense. So it's not a machine translation. It's a pseudo translation. So if I reopen it, you can see what I get is this, which if you can speak Russian, um, I'm sure you'll have a good laugh at this, but it is definitely um, not a proper translation. So now that I've got that, all I'm going to do is save that target file. So I just press Shift F12. And what I do is I'm going to overwrite the existing file. You don't have to overwrite it, but I'm not too worried about keeping the original. So I'm going to overwrite it. I guess you could rename it if you really wanted to. So actually, let's do that. If I come over here and take the XML and I just rename that, I'll give it a dot back. And I'll save this one with the same name. So if I close that now and I come back to here, I should now have this XML. If I look at that in my text editor, this is the one that's been translated. So you can see it's all the same text, but now it's Russian as opposed to being English. So to convert it back to a publisher, simplicity itself, I come back to studio, click on the welcome view, then click my little application, click on import this time. And when I go back here and I take the XML file, which is this one, and this time I drop the XML file in there and click on import. It runs through the process. And I'm done. If I just sort that in date and time order so I get the recent ones at the top. Okay, so the sample pub after import, this should be the Russian version. So we can see this is what it looks like, the Russian version. So it looks pretty good. You can see it's used my image, the one I've added as well. So the images have been changed as well. So it's recompiled the publisher file for me. This is really cool. Very smart application um, with everything there. I missed the second one. I'm sure it was there, but I just didn't see it. That was one. Oh, and that's the second one. There we do. So both images are in there. And the whole thing is now in um, being translated correctly. And also my strike through, my superscript, my subscript, my bold and my italic. It's all there exactly as it should have been before. So very smart has been able to do that for me. What I also have is the sample pub. You'll see that I have a back file there. Sample pub back. This back file is actually the original Microsoft Publisher file. And it's added this back extension to it. So if I open up the sample pub this time, this one is the Russian one. So this is the version I've translated in Microsoft Publisher, but it's the Russian version. So it's worked perfectly. So now I could go in there and make any changes I wanted to, to this, to the formatting, I could chop and change it using the native application. So my client will be very happy with me for this one, maybe not for the translation, but for the possibility to handle the file correctly in Microsoft Publisher. And basically that's it. It's as straightforward and as simple as that. Great work, Patrick.